stop and try again because now I'm on as a as a pen. Uh, I I don't see any uh, camera. Hey, Dickon. Yes. I don't have camera. I don't have camera either, Dickon. Corinne, can you hear me? Corinne's not here. Corinne is actually me, Max. Oh, Max, can you hear me? I can. I can hear both of you guys. So I'm going to try to move um, Dickon to be the, the host, and maybe that will make his video available. Yeah, okay. okay. Great. Thanks. Let's try that. Okay. Let me try my camera. Oh, there we go. So did that work? Yeah. Okay. That worked, Max. Great. <laughs> All right. Can you see can you see me? We cannot connect to your webcam. Oh. Yeah, my uh my camera is not um I I can't get on on camera, but I think it just matters that Dickon is. Yeah. So are we ready to go? Uh yeah. We're ready. We have uh, 19 people in attendance. Okay. Uh, good, so so um, I was just thinking that I would just go ahead and um, and introduce Dickon. And also um, introduce uh, the Three Principal Global Community uh, Nonprofit Organization. Um, so I think I'll just start with that first, and that is that the Three Principles Global Community is a nonprofit organization, and um, what we're in, it, it, we're, we're intending as an organization is to disseminate the principles worldwide, and also to be supportive of practitioners and people who are interested in the principles, and we do this by um, webinars like the one Dickon is going to do and we do this by having blogs and Twitter and conferences. We have a conference coming up in uh, September in Minneapolis and um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nonprofit in that it's all volunteers who, who do the work for the organization. So um, we're, we're, uh, this is one of our events to, to dis support and disseminate the principles. So welcome. And um, we're really happy and privileged to have Dickon Bettinger as a speaker. Um, I've known him for many years, and he's one of the few practitioners, I think, who has been teaching the principles for over 25 years. And um, he, he started with his own organization in Vermont many years ago, and we were lucky enough to, to get him to work for us for some time at Kransky & Associates. And he's a very versatile practitioner in that he um, has worked with businesses, couples, organizations, uh, individuals. He has a, a wide range of, of venues in which he's taught the principles. And, and the thing about and right now, one of the things he's doing that's new for him is he's doing a lot of public speaking worldwide, and he's getting tremendous feedback. And 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 that's kind of why one of the reasons we wanted him to um, do this webinar for us is because people just love his presentations. So um, on that note, um, I'd like to. Uh, turn this over to Dickon. Oh, one more thing is that Dickon's going to talk for like maybe 40 minutes and then we're going to open it up to questions. So he's going to have the floor for, you know, length of time before anybody can can ask something. That's the, the way we've set it up. So go ahead, Dickon. We're looking forward to listening to you. Okay, great. Thanks, Linda. Well, uh, I would like to uh, not just thank Linda, but the 3PGC. It takes a little while to get used to saying that that way. The Three Principles Global Community. Uh, what a wonderful, wonderful organization that has 
been in the works for uh, many years and there was an awful lot of thought and preparation that went into creating such a wonderful, resourceful website uh, and its ability to bring webinars and podcasts and blogs and uh, announcements to uh, people who have become interested in the, in the three principles. So I, ju I just wanted to really express my appreciation for that particular group and all that they're doing. Uh, I would also, uh, it just thrills me to think of, I see that there are 21 people who are listening in and I hope you're able to, uh, I hope everything is working on your end uh, and that you're able to hear everything. It's a delight, it just warms my heart to think of uh, you folks, uh, many of whom I, I know uh, quite well. It, it's really quite interesting using this format as a way of reaching people. Uh, technology has really made wonderful advances in our ability to be able to talk about and share the principles. Uh, I'm actually now Skyping with people in 12 different countries. Isn't that something as a way of being able to reach people? So thank you for joining. Well, today I wanted to talk about the three principles and what I'm calling the metaphor for looking within. And uh, when I first, uh, some of you may know my my story about how I, before I came across the principles, uh, I was really quite a searcher and seeker. And um, I figured there was something out there that I could learn and that there had to be something I had to do to get there <laughs> or to get it. <laughs> <laughs> that if I worked hard enough and long enough, I would eventually be able to develop or deepen my, uh, my own well-being and I would learn what I could tell other people to do so that they could develop their well-being. And uh, <laughs> I think if I had a bumper sticker, it would have read, tell me what to do and I'll do it. I was very serious about trying to figure out how to have more well-being in my life and how to be able to share that with other people. So uh, as many of you have heard, I was meditating four hours a day. I, w I had learned, trained myself to wake up at the end of REM sleep, so I was recording five full-length dreams every night to work on. Uh, I had a cognitive therapy notebook, I had uh, uh, affirmation notebook, I had um, journals, professional journals, uh, uh, structured journals, uh, unstructured journals. Uh, I was determined that I would crack the code and develop what it took to um, have more well-being. And I had been practicing for 10 years as a psychologist when I came across the teaching of a man named Sidney Banks. And when I first met Sidney Banks, there was something about his message that struck me very deep. He was basically saying, what you're looking for is not an it. What you are seeking is not something that you can ever understand intellectually, that your attempts to find your well-being or to 
uh, access your well-being through efforts of your own ego uh, will not get you where you want to go. And he talked a lot about two worlds and that there is an outer physical world that we're a part of, uh, our, including our thoughts and feelings and bodies and our, all of our feelings and, and as well as the physical world that we see and that we live in. He says, but there's another world and it's a spiritual world and it's formless and it's not only real, but it's essential and necessary for every moment of our existence. And that this formless spiritual energy is the source and substance of every moment that we experience and that because we have misunderstood the true source of experience, we have been misguided and we've been searching for something in the physical world to help us have psychological well-being. And he, as many mystics before Sid had suggested, he suggested look within. He said, don't look out at the physical world. You, you're, already, you're already really good at that. <laughs> you've been doing that your whole life. You've been trained to do that. You, you, you've been looking toward form and trying to take what has already been created and improve on it. And boy, did that hit me because my whole life was really dedicated to efforts and attempts to self-improve. And suddenly he's pointing me in a different direction and he's saying, uh, there's something else to be learned here. There's something else that when you discover, it becomes real for you in your life and it helps you in a very, very practical way. It helps you understand how the human mind operates. It helps you understand why people behave the way they do. It helps you understand where your feelings come from and the true source of your feelings. And so I approached that originally in the same way that I had approached everything else in my life was I think, okay, said, tell me what to do and I'll do it. Oh, look within. Okay, tell me where to look. Okay, I'm ready. Oh, I'm ready now. You can tell me where to look, and I'll look. And and I took it literally. I took it literally, and it wasn't until later that I heard him say, "What I'm pointing you toward can't be understood by the intellect. It's invisible but essential." And that we can only speak about that which is invisible and essential by metaphor. And we can use metaphors as a way of helping people wake up to or realize something that is already existing, but that you can't put into an idea or a belief or a concept or a form. So looking within suddenly took on a different understanding. Is that, and, and let me just tell you what I've been realizing of late and how I see this now. Because it is wonderful, it is, it is helpful to understand this notion of looking within. As anyone begins to realize that they live in a thought-created world, as anyone begins to realize that we are conscious beings who have the capacity to be aware, and as anyone realizes that we are connected to this deeper potential and intelligence and source, something begins to happen for people. And I see this in all of my clients. I see this in anyone that I see who begins to have insight about the three principles is that you begin to be drawn more and more toward the source. You begin to be drawn more and more 
toward where experience is coming from. And this just happens naturally. This just happens naturally for people. So you could say that most people are continually looking out at the world and thinking about objects in the world. And that we spend an enormous amount of our time in our life and to look in that direction so that if we don't feel very good, we look towards something in the world that we can attribute as being the source of our feeling. This is what many people have been calling the outside-in view of life. We begin to say, I feel the way I do because of something in the world. Let me see. What is it that I think is responsible for my feeling this way? Well, I was feeling pretty good until you said what you did, so I must feel the way I do because of what you said. <laughs> I was feeling pretty good until this guy started tailgating me in my car, and now I'm upset, so that person has upset me. And it's totally understandable that for centuries people have had a misunderstanding where when they have feelings, they attribute them to something in the world because it's the world that's visible and it's the world that we can see and that's where we've been looking our whole life is into the world. As people begin to have an understanding of this principle of thought, they begin to learn that there is one source to all experience. There is one source to our upset, to our stress, to our happiness, to our joy, to our love. There is one source for our feelings, and that's the principle of thought, that all feelings are born from thought. So if a sad thought is created within you, you're going to experience sadness. A happy thought is created within you and you will experience happiness. Well, as you begin to realize that thought has something to do with your experience, there is a tendency to begin to stop blaming the world as being the source of our experience, to stop looking at the world as being looking to the world for our reason for why we feel the way we do. And we start to have a deeper understanding. We wake up to the fact that this particular feeling that I'm in in this moment is being created from within via thought. This particular feeling. Uh, the other day, I was talking to uh, a very close friend who's having a very serious medical problem, and I was very worried about him. And at a certain point, I just realized that the experience I was having, this experience of worry or anxiety, was being created from thought. Now, fortunately, in human beings, it's built into human beings that when they wake up to the fact that thought is the source of their experience, there is a natural tendency for that thinking to begin to dissipate and to fall away. Some people have been talking about this as it's a self-correcting system, that the human system is a self-correcting system, that it knows how to bring us back to a mind that's free and clear. It knows how to bring us back to the present moment. And I used to spend so much time trying to do that through my own efforts. And it's just not necessary. And that as my personal thinking, as my worry, as my upset begins to dissipate in my thinking, there's a natural tendency of all human beings to come back to a clear mind, to a mind free and clear of that thinking. And this is a natural state for us, a natural state for us, a mind 
free and clear. It's universe, universally true that when any human being on this planet, when their head begins to clear, they fall back into the present moment, a free and clear mind, a consciousness or an awareness that's free and clear of the thoughts that upset us. You could call that greater purity of thought. You could call that purity of consciousness. And there's a sense of falling, you know, when I'm caught up in my thinking, like when I'm feeling anxious and I'm caught up, you notice the word up, that's a metaphor. I'm up and that when I wake up to my thinking and it falls away and I fall out of my personal thinking into the present moment, these are metaphors. There's a falling just like when we fall asleep, we fall out of our personal thinking into a different state of mind. So we could talk about falling awake. We wake up to the fact of thought, and there's a natural tendency then to fall back from that thinking, to fall out of that thinking, to let go of that thinking, to drop out of that thinking that happens naturally. falling into this deeper place, this present moment place, falling out of our heads into our, sometimes Sid would call this space that we fall into our soul. We fall into our soul. The soul is just our natural state of presence, uncontaminated by our personal thinking. Metaphorically, it's, it's deeper than we're caught up or when we're uptight and we fall into ourselves. Uh, people have used the metaphor of centering. There's falling into your center. People have said you fall out of your head into your heart, into a, a very normal, natural state. And this has been happening to us our whole life. We just haven't realized the nature of it and what's behind it and the power of it. And that when we fall into this clear mind, our minds are wide open and receptive at that point. And there's something else that I learned then, that when a human being's mind is relaxed and open and receptive, there's a natural tendency to fill up, to get, to have emerge, to arise within us new thinking and new thinking and feelings of well-being that they're natural to emerge in the moment. So this looking within as a metaphor is just a way of describing what begins to happen is that metaphorically people go from being caught up on the outside caught up in thinking about the outside, caught up in worrying about the outside, caught up in thinking that the outside is what's causing you to feel the way you do, to waking up to the fact of thought, which begins to pull you inside, where you begin to lose interest in thinking about something in the world that you think might be causing you to feel the way you do because you begin to realize it's coming from thought. It's being created from thought. It's just a thought. It's coming now in this moment as thought. And as my thinking changes, my feeling changes. It's just thought. And but for this thought, this feeling wouldn't exist. It's just a temporary creation. And we begin to fall out of that thinking because we no longer are holding on to this misconception, this misunderstanding that is coming from outside of us. 
<laughs> if I think it's coming from outside of us, I'm going to be doing a lot of thinking about whatever it is that I think is responsible for my feeling this way. Oh, you're upsetting me. Okay, now I got to think about how to get you to stop being that way and to be different. And I, I won't be able to feel better until you change. <laughs> Uh, so you begin to see that it's thought and you fall deeper. These are metaphors. You fall deeper. Oh, you fall out of your personal thinking. You fall back into the present moment. It wakes you back up to the present moment. Your mind begins to clear. As your mind clears, you have more and more clarity. You begin to see life as it is, undistorted and contaminated by your judgmental thinking, your concepts, your your beliefs, your ideas, your your notions about life, and you begin to see life more clearly. When you see life through that clearer lens, there's less distortion. It's a clearer view. And as that territory becomes more familiar to you, you begin to realize how you operate beautifully when you have clarity of mind. You deal with things beautifully. You communicate beautifully. Why is that? Because this deeper intelligence, this principle of mind is a response of wisdom and it responds to whatever is in front of you. It's a response of intelligence. It responds to what's in front of you. So if someone is in, say, say a, a child is in front of you and, and they fall over and they're crying and they're hurt and your mind is in the moment and you're free and clear, this responsive intelligence knows exactly what to say and what to do and how to respond and it fills you up with feelings of compassion and, and concern. Now, if you're in a business meeting, and you're caught up in your own personal thinking and then you wake up to it and you fall out of that and you become more present, this deeper response of wisdom will then bring you thinking that is helpful and appropriate to the moment, that's helpful and appropriate to the problem that's being discussed. It's not something that you have to do. You don't have to clear your head. You don't have to try and figure out what to say. It's a natural, built-in response that happens as people, as people deepen their understanding of the principles. So people don't end up looking within, they end up falling within, they end up discovering within, they end up blaming less and less the outside world and thinking less and less about the outside and begin to fall more into the present moment and out of the present moment arises new thinking and new ideas and so you begin to have a deeper and deeper respect for this intelligence that we're connected to that it will bring you. You begin to have trust and faith that it will bring you the thinking that you need when you need it. It will bring you the thinking that's responsive to the situation that you're in. I was recently doing a training for a uh, uh, department at Michigan State University. And the people in the department uh, were feeling like they had way more work than they were able to do. So they were feeling an enormous degree of stress and overwhelm. They were uh, uh, finding it very difficult to be um, a good team member or a good team player because they felt like they had to put all of their energy into trying to keep their head above water and try to, trying to stay on top of their work and they were just getting more and more and more stressed out and uh, uh, so when I began to talk with them about the principles, 
began to, and they began to wake up to the role that thought was playing in creating their stress. And they began to see that stress was not being created by their circumstance, but that was being created from thought. They began to fall away from obsessively thinking about their work and their problems, and their minds began to quiet down. It just, it just is such a marvel to me, after all these years of working with people, that as people begin to recognize the fact of thought, without anything else happening, they begin to fall back and away from more and more of the thinking that they were doing without realizing the effect it was having on them. Dickon? Yes. I was wondering if it would be a good point to find out what people are hearing, if it's making sense, if they have any questions. What do you think? Yeah, perfect. I was just, uh, I was just looking at the clock and thinking the same, Linda. So, oh, great. Uh, perfect, perfect. So we'll op open it up for questions or comments. Uh, and if anybody has a question, I think if you hit that exclamation mark, um, I can unmute you, or you can unmute yourself, uh, or you can write a little message in that um, message section in the bottom, and then I can unmute you. So, let's see. Kat McHugh, do you have a question? Mm -hmm. No? No? Alright. Uh, Janet Lindsay, did you have a question? Um, not a question really. I'm just I'm just here being it feels like I've been rocked to sleep by Deacon's voice. So just thank you for that, Deacon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're welcome, Janet. <laughs> No, it's, it's, it's leaving me with a beautiful feeling, so thank you for that. Oh, you're welcome. It's wonderful sharing this with you folks. Uh, Darko, did you have a question? No? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Hello. Yes, I have uh, one question. Yes. Uh, I'm interested in this. You said uh, that uh, all that we experience comes from thought, right? Yes. So all experiences, bad and good. Yes. I have I have a feeling that uh, when we come out of thought, you know, when we think less, when we see the thought for what it is, then uh, the what we call the mind, comes to the surface and you can feel the mind, you can feel the love, you can feel the connectedness, right? Yes. And that is not thought anymore, right? Well, the mind is expressing itself via thought or we wouldn't be able to feel love or warmth or kindness or that, uh -huh. that that's thought too. That's also thought. That's uh -huh. born fresh. It's it's fresh thinking. It's new thinking. It's 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 being created fresh in the moment. It's coming alive through us and creating experiences of love and wonder and and mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and, and uh, such feelings. Yeah, that uh, the way I see it, it seems to me like that. That uh, the Pure love is something even beyond thought. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm new in this whole concept. So, and uh, the, uh, what you're telling the new fresh thoughts are just uh, 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 just forms of the love to manifest. You know, something like that. Uh. Every single experience we have is brought to us via thought, or we wouldn't be able to have it. Mm -hmm. And when we wake up to the fact of thought, 
a lot of the old thinking that we were doing or the memory-based thinking that we were doing begins to fall away. Mm -hmm. And as it falls away, when people are resting in open presence, when people are, are uh, when, they're, when there's space in their minds for new thought to emerge, the new thinking that emerges is of a higher order. Yes. The new thinking that emerges is, is thinking that moves us in a direction of health and well-being. I, yeah. I, I sometimes think of that deeper intelligence or that deeper wisdom as an evolutionary impulse and life itself is always moving in the direction of balance and equilibrium and uh, uh, allowing species to grow and evolve and thrive, right? So that the new thinking that comes in moves us in the direction mm -hmm. of uh, thriving, moves us in the direction of connecting, moves us in the direction of well-being, moves us in the direction of love. Yes, yes I, I figure it is. That's true. Thank you. Oh, you Thank welcome. you for the answer. Oh, you're welcome. That was a great question. Um, Jean, did you have a question? I do. Can you hear me? Yes, hi, Jean. Hi. Thank you so much. It's been wonderful to listen to you and share. I, I'm amazed that through this technology that I can feel a feeling. <laughs> you know, I'm experiencing it by a thought. <laughs> um, and I have a very specific question. I am experiencing a lot and a lot more quiet mind, maybe like to an extent I never experienced in my life, you know, so it feels kind of extreme. And that's that's been beautiful. It's been really easy in in some very difficult circumstances. And um, recently I watched a therapist work with my daughter, and she did some things that I thought, you know, from my perspective, wasn't such a good idea. <laughs> and then I asked some educators and some other therapists, and they also said, to my surprise, that they didn't think it was such a good idea. And um, and then my daughter's five, and and uh, started after being in this therapy for a period of time, and we won't get into the history of this, but she started to have some problems at school. And I decided that I didn't think that this was maybe the best approach for her, and, and maybe she needed something different. Um, but her father and I are divorced, and we're not in agreement. And so what was interesting, um, so I, I, I had some thinking about how to take care of her, protect her. You know, ultimately, it's like the therapist needs both of us to be in agreement for our daughter to see her. But I, I find myself sort of like, well, if she's innately well, this is like my thinking that I got caught up in. It's like, well, if she's innately well, then why couldn't she get continue with this therapist? You know, but my, my and I, I, I'm going to use the word intuition, which I think is kind of a funny word to use in the principles, but my intuition is, is to stop it and to sort of create some space for her and maybe find something else uh, where she can talk to somebody with less, they, where they would have less influence, more of a listening role. Yes. Um, yeah. So I'm just bringing this to you just as somebody who's navigated longer with quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that makes sense. Because, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, of course, the thinking is around being a good mother, right? That's where the thinking yeah. comes in. <laughs> Yes, yeah, okay. no, I know. I, I, I know, and I tell you, there there are an awful lot of parents that are uh, listening keenly right now because <laughs> that's a question that, as a parent, you can't help but to ask at some point is, how do I do best by my kids? Right. Yeah. Right? And so... Um, uh, as you begin to see. I can see that it, when you start feeling a little confused about what to do, Jean, mm -hmm. or you start feeling a little uncertain, that's very common, right? And you begin to see your uncertainty and your confusion about how to deal with this and what to do. You start seeing that as thought, and it begins to fall away a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And then out of that space that you keep coming back to that space, you, you, 
you can never go wrong when you fall out of your thinking into that quiet space because then that little voice deep inside of us begins to play through us. You know, what you said is your intuition and you begin to listen to it and when it comes from that place and it brings with uh, a feeling of rightness of, oh yeah, this makes sense. When you trust and follow your own wisdom, your own common sense, I guarantee no matter what you do here, it's going to work out, Jean. Yeah, I, that's my sense, and I, I just appreciate hearing it again. <laughs> we <laughs> have you. to hear it over and over and over again, and you and as your understanding deepens, you just begin to be more aware of what gets in the way of your common sense, and you get better ears for listening to and trusting your common sense. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense considering yeah. the circumstances. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah, it's not really it's not really a function of just the quiet. It's it's all of us have moments of quiet, and then all of us have thinking that gets in the way of our being able to hear deeply our own wisdom. So you begin to be more aware of 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 that, and you begin to then be more aware of the thinking that gets in the way and you begin to have more trust and faith in what shows up in the thinking. Wisdom is really amazing is when our minds are clear, the thinking that's helpful for us shows up. And you get better and better at just trusting what shows up in those moments. Thank you, Dickens. Oh, you're welcome, team. Thank you for the question. Okay. Uh, Margo, did you have a question? Margo? All right. Uh, Linda, did you have a question? Linda Giuliano? Uh, yeah. Debbie, how about Debbie Grunberg, Berger? Oh, yeah, there she is. Debbie, did you have a question? Excuse me, it's not Debbie. Oh, yes, hi. Hi. I just want to say that I really love listening to you. Oh, thank you. And uh, I just, uh, when, when you talk, I feel what, what falling into means. <laughs> Yeah, I like that metaphor. It's become one of my favorite metaphors. You know, everybody knows about falling asleep, and people know about falling in love, and it's just it's just such a nice metaphor that when you wake up to the fact of thought, there's a natural tendency to fall out of our personal thinking into the moment where we're more open and receptive to this deeper intelligence coming through us. Yeah, and it's a really, really great feeling. That is a nice feeling, isn't it? Thank uh, for you. Me too. Oh, you're welcome. It's really good to hear from you. Okay, do we have anybody else? Any other questions? Uh, Kat. Kat, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Oh, that's wonderful. Hi, Dickon. Hi, how are you? Uh, nice to speak to you. I know, that's oh. wonderful. It is. Now I have to speak very quietly because I'm going to um, wake the whole house if I do speak any louder. Okay. Um, um, well, I'm going to um, put my biggest biggie right out here now. I'm going to be brave. Um, no, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, since I've discovered the three principles, I'm, I'm walking through this w world with a say, constant level of, of happiness where I almost feel like, like nothing can touch me and I've got humor and I see beauty everywhere and yeah. I'm so grateful for that. Uh, and on the surface, however, I, I have um, basically, almost on a daily basis, I'm making 
the decision if I'm going to um, basically stay in my relationship or not. Um, then, yeah, um, my husband very much disapproves of, of what's happening with the three, of what I found in the three principles and other things I do as well. And, um, yeah, he's just very scared and jealous of everything that I do. That um, means expressing myself. Now, now, I very much believe that I do play a part in that, that I believe that I kind of almost withdraw into the world of th and the three principles and the Facebook community um, the more that he grips and the other way around. So, in the end of the day, um, when I withdraw, then I use this beautiful community as well as an outside in mm -hmm. kind of mm -hmm. um, place. <laughs> <laughs> and it is funny because I do, um, yeah, I've got a very good friend, um, Christine, who really, like, every week sends me a little message saying, follow your wisdom, follow your wisdom, and I do. But sometimes my wisdom tells me read, and sometimes it, sometimes it tells me try. And it always feels the same, and it always feels good, but it gives me different messages. Uh, and that's the situation I am in. So have you got any thinking on that? Well, I've I've long ago learned that uh, giving people advice is not really going to help them. Yeah. But I, I, but I but I do know when I heard you talk about that you find yourself living more and more of the time in a place where you experience your own well-being, you experience happiness, you experience uh, and you see beauty everywhere, that if you continue to live in that direction, whatever problems you're dealing with will become clearer and clearer to you. Mm -hmm. and that in the meantime, being able to bring that those feelings of warmth and beauty and love to your husband as he struggles through this yeah. is a powerful, beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. And that you continue to move in that direction and you continue to see and take responsibility for your own feelings and reactions, you, it will continue to unfold just the way it's meant to unfold. I guarantee it, it will, it will continue to unfold just as it's meant to unfold. Mm -hmm. So I really like what you're saying to me and I like the direction that you're headed and what you've been learning and you keep coming back to that those experiences. You keep falling out of your personal experience, your personal thinking, so that you deepen that sense of beauty and love mm -hmm. and warmth. It will oh, guide you. Yes, yeah. that feeling will continue to guide you. That feeling will continue to guide you. Dickon, do you mind if I... Oh, I'm sorry. Do you mind I if I ask? Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was just saying thank you, and that's very comforting. Oh, you're welcome. And I, mm. do you mind if I add one other additional comment to that, Dickon? Yeah, sure, Linda. Well, you know, what, I love what he said. You know about I love I love the way you answer questions, Dickon. I really do. <laughs> I just, because it's true advice. You know, it doesn't really ultimately help people. They have to find their own answers. Mm -hmm. And in that, when you go away from your predictable or treadmill or the thinking that plagues you and torments you or your um, ambivalence, um, doubt, all of that kind of thinking, and you go into a different feeling, at some point, if you stay in that feeling, you're going to get a new thought that's going to answer your question about whether you should stay or leave. The problem for people is it doesn't happen on their time frame. 
they have an idea about when it should happen. You know, they need the answer now. But but what Dickens said is true. It's like the the, the more you stay away from your common habitual thinking and and doubt and all of that and go into a better feeling, at some point you will get an answer. I mean, you have to. It's just the way the system is, is when you get away from your predictable thinking and you go into a feeling, you're going to get a new thought. And, and I would also add that the, in the meantime, the feeling, the feeling that you discover is the answer in this moment until you get new thinking. Yes. <laughs> That really helped me to see that both I have the answer and there's more new thinking to be had, and both are true. That's beautiful. Well, thank you for asking that. That was, uh, uh, that's a beautiful, beautiful question. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Dickon, there's about five minutes left. Do you want to um, maybe take one more question and wrap up, or what do you think? Yeah, I think we could do maybe one quick question, and then I'd like to just say a couple of things to wrap up. Okay. Uh, so, does anybody else have a question? Anybody wants, they can raise their hand or they can send me a little message and I'll un unmute you. Okay, well maybe if you just want to um, wrap up with that, with any closing thoughts, Dickon? Yeah, thanks, Max. Uh, this whole notion of looking within is something that happens naturally for people as their understanding of the principles deepens. It's not a technique. It's not something that you have to do. It's something that begins to happen naturally. This waking up to your own thinking so it's beautiful to learn the principle of thought because you begin to realize that there is one true source to all of your thinking, all of your feeling and experience. And that takes your eyes off of the world more and you begin to fall out of so much of the thinking that I'm doing is, is just thinking that gets in the way of my own clarity. It's just really unnecessary. And it's built on or based in a misunderstanding in the moment about where, where my experience is coming from. So to wake up to thought and then fall into this more awake, present, conscious state is how I experience the principle of consciousness as a space that I fall into that's just awake is present, it's aware, it's, it doesn't hold, it's always there, it's always present. It's like the personal thinking that I was caught up in are like the clouds. Falling out of the clouds, I realized that the sky, this open spaciousness is always there, present. And that out of this open spaciousness, the sun starts to shine through. That's how I experience the intelligence of mind operating through pure consciousness or the present moment. It, one of the things that Sid Banks said that really, really affected me is that when you fall into a clear mind, when you when you 
enter that state when you touch a state free of personal thought, at that moment it must, it must manifest something new in the world. It must, and he used that word must, it must manifest something new in the world. And to begin to see then the simplicity of this is we're always walking around in experiences and we wake up to the fact of thought, we fall into the this open conscious state that's always the backdrop to our thinking experience, that's always there, whether our thinking is there or not, it come as our thinking comes and goes, when our thinking falls away, we become more aware of the fact of awareness itself. We become more aware, literally become more aware of what's around us. We're more wide open. And in that openness, we're open and receptive to this deeper divine influence. So on an experiential level, the principles become more and more simple and they become less and less things to understand with your intellect and more and more that out of your understanding you begin to experience the metaphor of falling within more and more deeply and living your life from a deeper, richer center and place. So that's the metaphor that I was uh, playing playing around in. The, uh, the uh, metaphors are the poetry and language of the soul. And uh, so uh, to begin to point toward this potential and possibility that exists already fully in every human being, is, it's wonderful to use uh, metaphors. Really, really want to thank everybody for coming today and uh, for having an opportunity to share my thoughts on this. And uh, hopefully we can feel free to get in touch with me if you uh, have further questions or want to continue the dialogue. Thank you so much, Dickon. Oh, you're welcome, Linda. For Thanks doing for that. that. It was, Thanks for it your was beautiful really good. introduction. Thank you. Thank you. So okay. there'll be there'll be more of these uh, webinars um, put on by the the Three Principle Global Community for those that, of you that um, want to continue to watch and learn, and we we really invite and welcome you to do so. So thank you, thank you all for coming. Great. Thanks again, Linda. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Max. Thanks, Max. Thanks,